Hello everyone and in this video I'm going to show you how you can get started with integrating Firebase with your Surf UI application. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do is to go ahead on Google and search for Firebase console. Let's go ahead and click on the Firebase console. Now make sure that you are actually logged in and you can use your Google account to log in. You can see a couple of different projects that I have on my dashboard, but in your case, if you have never really used Firebase, it might be completely blank. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a new project. And we're going to build an app for grocery management. So I'm simply going to say grocery app. If you want to enable Google Analytics, you can, that's perfectly fine. And select an account and then create a project. Now this is going to create a project on the Firebase dashboard, and then it will give us instructions on how we can integrate this project with our Surf UI application. And we will be using Xcode 12 or above for our application. All right, so it looks like it is done creating the project. Let's go ahead and say continue. And this is our project homepage. And you can see that you have a couple of different options of integrating the app or integrating the uh, Firebase with your app. You can use iOS, Android, web, and even Unity. Now, obviously we are only dealing with iOS. I'm simply going to click on iOS. And then I need to provide the bundle ID. So let's go back to our app. I have already created a, a simple, application, Surf UI, it really has nothing in it, as you can see. The only thing I actually want is the bundle identifier, so I'm just gonna copy it and paste it. And you can provide some sort of a nickname that is optional or some sort of a App Store ID if your app is actually on the App Store, but our app is not. So I'm just gonna say register the app. Now what it's going to say is that we need to download this Google service info.plist file. And you can see that after downloading, we should be able to drag and drop it into our application. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna click on this download Google service info.plist. And you can see that I am downloading the file. Perfect. Now after the file has been downloaded, I need to drag and drop this into my Surf UI application or any application that I want to integrate with Firebase. Let's go ahead and try to drag and drop. I'm gonna drag it, go to the top portion, or trying to go, there we go. No, it's just going to the, there we go. And we should be able to jump in there. And there we go. Perfect. So now we have our grocery app with the info.plist file added. Perfect, right? Okay. But that's not the complete story. So let's go back to our app and press on next. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to use CocoaPods to install the required dependency. So let's go back and try to initialize our project with CocoaPods. So I'm gonna go right here on the project. I have uh, placed my project on the desktop, but you can put it anywhere you want. Let's go ahead and open up a new window. And let's go ahead and jump into the project. Once you're inside your project folder, go ahead and say pod init. Basically, we are initializing CocoaPods. And all it does is that it creates an extra file, a pod file, which can be used to say that which dependencies you want to fetch. So let's go ahead and open up this pod file, pod file. And we're opening this up in the default editor, which is text edit, but obviously you can open it up in any editor that you want. So now what we want is that we want to add the dependencies. The only dependency or the only pod or package that we're trying to install right now is the Google Analytics. And you may need it, you may not need it, but it's a good way to get started at least. So I'm just gonna copy all of this stuff. And right over here, I'm just gonna paste it. Save it, close it, and now finally run pod install. When you run pod install, 
the CocoaPods is going to read the pod file and it's going to download everything related to the, the packages that you want to download. So there we go. And you have downloaded everything. Pay special attention to what it is saying over here. It's saying that from now on, you should close Xcode sessions and use the grocery app workspace. So let me go to Xcode and close it. Open up my grocery app folder and you will see that we have now a workspace. So let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, now let's go ahead and try to run this or build it first. And you will immediately notice that you have 13 errors. Now these errors are related to the Firebase compatibility with uh, the, uh, the current Xcode 12. And what has actually happened is that Xcode 12 has dropped the support for iOS 8 and we need to fix these things. So let's see how we can fix it. What we're going to do is we're just going to remove all the build settings and delete for every single target, the iPhone deployment targets. So let's go to the pod file. And in the pod file, right at the end, paste this code. Don't worry too much about where this code came from. I'm going to go ahead and link a couple of different files. Uh, this code is everywhere online, as on the Stack Overflow, on different blogs. So I'm going to just uh, put a link to one of the resources and you can simply copy paste it. Let's go to product clean, product, build, still we have 13 errors. So it's still not gone. There is another thing that we have to do, which is related to the parts project. So I'm just gonna go to the parts project, make sure that you are selecting the parts project, then select the bill settings. And what we are searching for is something called coated. Let's see if we can actually figure it out. Coated include in, it's actually right at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. It's uh, right there at the bottom. Let's see, yeah, right at the bottom. It says coated include, it's kind of hard to point to it, but over here, coated include in framework header, and it is set to yes. So what we're going to do is set this to no. Now keep in mind that every time you run pod install, so maybe in the future you want to install some other pods, this particular settings, quoted included framework header, is going to reset itself to yes again. So you have to do it again. You have to set it to no again. Now, Firebase team is actually working on resolving this issue with Xcode 12, and hopefully in a couple of months, uh, they will be able to provide you with a release where you don't have to do this part and you don't have to do, well, the part that we just did, this part. So hopefully it's in the works and we will get it shortly. Again, product, clean build folder, product, build, and let's see if it builds successfully. And there it goes. It actually built successfully. Perfect, right? Now, right now, the parts that we have is only for Google, Firebase Analytics. It has nothing to do with Firestore. So let's go ahead and download the pod for Firestore so we can start using Firestore. Now in this video, I'm just going to show you how you can set up the Firestore. So basically we're just doing the setup part of it. And then in the next videos, I'm going to show you how you can actually perform the save operation, how you can perform the read operation, fetch operation, hierarchy, authentication, all of those good stuff. But we're starting small. We're just trying to set up our project, all right? Okay, so currently we have only analytics and uh, that's fine, but we actually need the Firestore also. So let's go ahead and see how we can get the Firestore package. All right, so right now I'm on the documentation for the Firestore, you can see in the URL. And what I want to find out is that, well, what's the name of the package that I need to install to integrate Firestore database with my app? So on the left menu, I'm gonna to go to Firestore and getting started. Scroll down and you will see iOS, web, Java, and a lot more. 
So we're only interested in iOS. So that's the two parts that we actually need to work with Firestore. Let's go ahead and copy these two. And let's go ahead and try to put this in the part file. Perfect. And after putting it in the part file, we obviously have to run part install because these are the two new parts that we actually added. So let's go open up the terminal, make sure that you are in the correct directory and we are, and then I'm just gonna say pod install. And you can see that it is now downloading the Firebase Firestore and all the other dependencies related to Firebase Firestore. One thing you will notice is that when you go back to your project and try to build it, you are greeted with those 13 errors again. You know, hopefully, how to solve this. Let's go to the project over here, which is parts. And right at the bottom, you can see that this particular property is again set to yes. We're gonna go ahead and set it to no. Let's go ahead and uh, build it again. And hopefully at this time when it builds, it should be building successfully. So you can see it is actually trying to build right now. The first time or any time actually you install the pods again, it does take a while to build and it also depends on the different parts that you are download, um, you downloaded and what frameworks it is building and what parts you have downloaded. You can see there's a lot of parts now and it has to build at least once for us to get started. Once it is built, then on the subsequent builds, it will be a little bit faster. Okay, so it's still building. We can go ahead and jump into our grocery app and we can see that how we can initialize the Firebase app. So let's go to the grocery app app well, that's how we misspelled it, I guess. It's now called Grocery App App. Okay, that's fine. So this is our Grocery App. And if we go back to the documentation and click on Next, it's basically saying that you need to go to App Delegate and you need to call Firebase App dot configure. Well, there is no App Delegate. If you're using Xcode 12, we don't really have any App Delegate. We have an app, which is this one. So let's go ahead and try to call this function, Firebase app dot configure right inside the window group. The first thing we're gonna do is import Firebase and let's go ahead and call it Firebase app dot configure. If you try to build this, it's going to tell you, well, you can't really do that. And the reason is that the window group is supposed to return a view, but Firebase app.configure does not return a view. So what about if I simply place it over here and do it like this? No, it's still, it doesn't like it. Okay, so we can't really do that. Although we can't really put anything in window group, well, that doesn't satisfy the criteria of being a window group, we can always go ahead and create the initializer. And inside the initializer, we can simply say Firestore or Firebase app dot configure. And this is going to allow us to configure the Firebase. And now you can see that we don't really have any error. Now this configuration is for the Firebase app. So basically you, this is required for you to set up the Firebase app. But we still have to initialize the Firestore and that is going to allow us to integrate with the database. Let's go back to our documentation, click next. And uh, we can perhaps skip this step. Uh, let's go ahead and run our app. Sometimes you have to run the app for at least once so that it can communicate and it can say that the app has been validated. But sometimes you have to, sometimes you don't. I'm just gonna run it for the first time. I mean, the app is not really going to display anything. It's just hello world. So right now we are running the app. You can see hello world. Uh, you can see all the messages being displayed by Firebase. That's fine. Let's go ahead and stop it. And this doesn't, I don't know what it's doing, but let's go ahead and skip this step. 
Sometimes it, this step can actually take a little bit of while to configure correctly. See that? Checking if the app has communicated with our server, you may need to uninstall or reinstall your app. Uh, okay, that's fine. What we want to do right now is we want to set up the Firebase Firestore. That's our database. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the Firestore database and click on the Create Database. Now there are two different options of creating the database. We can start in the production mode or we can start in the test mode. The production mode basically says that you cannot read or write from the database unless and until you have been authenticated. So we don't really have any authentication and we're just trying to get started. So we're just going to get started with the test mode, which means that you don't require authenticated, you don't have to be authenticated to read or write from the database. And location is fine, enable. And this is going to allow you to create the fire store database. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure that it actually creates a database and it's going to redirect us to a page where it will show us the database structure. And right now, since we just started the database, you can see that we don't have anything, all right? Okay, so let's go back to our code. I'm gonna go jump into the content view. And over here, I'm going to initialize a Firestore reference, meaning a DB reference, a database reference, which can allow me to insert and delete and select and update and all those operations. Now, in your actual application, you should not be doing this inside a view, but we are just trying to create this in a very plain structure way. So I'm just going to try to do it over here. Import Firebase, import Firebase Firestore Swift. The Firebase Firestore Swift module or framework allows us to use the new features uh, of Swift language, which is codable, decodable, encodable, and all those things and it allows us to use the models to easily persist those models in the Firestore database. Let's go to the content view, and we're going to go ahead and create a private property DB, which will be of Firestore. And in the initialization, since this is a root view, we can go ahead and say DB equals to Firestore.Firestore. .firestore. There we go. And that's it. Now we are ready to use this DB instance, and this DB instance is going to allow us to insert data, retrieve data, update data, query the data, fetch the data, and all those different operations. And that is something that we are going to be covering in the future videos. If you want to learn more about performing all the different operations with Firebase, including nested data authentication, then go ahead and become a patron. Uh, patrons will get a lot more videos about all the updated stuff, including Firebase, including core data, and I'm continuously working hard to make exceptional videos for my patrons. So go to patreon.com slash adamsharp and check out the membership plan. There is a silver tier and a gold tier, and you will get access to all the Firebase videos that I will create. If you're interested in supporting my Udemy channel, then go to and search for Mohammed Azam Udemy and you'll be able to see many different courses that I have on Udemy. And you will also be able to look at the courses in the YouTube description. So if you want to buy some courses, you can definitely check it out. I actually recently published a different course, uh, which is for Redux. So if you search for Sif UI and Redux, you should be able to see that course right over here composable Surf UI architecture using Redux. This is a four hour course and it will allow you to learn Redux with Surf UI. So you have already learned and looked at uh, MVVM design pattern, but uh, this one is going to show you that how you can use Redux design pattern with Surf UI. Thank you so much for your continuous support and I really hope that you enjoyed the video.